Good morning, folks. Our star has probably had two dozen eruptions this week, none of them aimed at our planet. We have some key science updates today. We're taking the onset of a coronal hole stream in the solar wind. We've got a quick announcement at the end, and these are various wavelength shots of our star over the last 24 hours. Coronal hole on the south. Bright active regions all around. We will continue to monitor the eruptive activity, especially for the plasma filaments on the Earth-facing disk. So let's take a quick look at the CME produced from the largest of the last day. Far side filament eruption with gorgeous helical filament to the CME ejection seen on SOHO this morning. So the earth facing coronal hole will amplify the solar wind over the weekend. But let's run this backwards here. We're going back in time a couple of days to where that coronal hole was just coming in and the previous one was facing earth. That's the one driving the stream that arrived this morning. It is minor thus far, but you can see the small variation in telemetry. And up top, the increase in geomagnetic coupling with the solar wind enhancement as the black and red lines head upward. Maybe some geomagnetic activity today, but likely to be minor to moderate only. Two papers on climate to start here. This one on those hemispheric asymmetries of solar forcing. One of the reasons it's been harder to see about 25% of the solar forcing activity because opposite forcings at the poles cancel out when you're only using global data views. Speaking of the polar regions, polar cap indices have been wrong. This was published three years ago, and many publications still use the old bad data. That's what they're calling out today. Hopefully, the use of the new data will help elucidate what they've been missing. But today's top story is a huge collaboration. Top scientists from across the world and top organizations are together today saying yet another reason we have been called crazy the last decade happens to be true. The cosmic rays and specifically the solar forcing of cosmic rays is a huge factor in triggering excess magnitude seismicity. It not only juices up the global electric circuit, which interacts with the crust, but higher energy rays hit the upper mantle and change viscosity parameters, especially if it's silica rich. This is a huge concept, along with polar forcing by the sun, in our Weatherman's Guide to the Sun textbook. We hit dozens of problems like the polar cap errors, and tack on much more solar forcing of weather and earthquakes in the supplement coming out now. Folks, today is the last day to pre-order the supplement at otf.cells.com. After today, we will be 100% focused on getting these packed and shipped out to you, and when all pre-orders have shipped, the book will be back in the store along with the PDF version. We greatly appreciate your support. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org. Your Deeper Look episode yesterday covered why Pluto and Neptune had atmospheric cooling collapses, how we expect that for the gas giants as well, and how Mars destabilization may be a different planetary reaction to the same galactic magnetic reversal affecting the entire solar system. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.